We are asking tough questions tonight as many of us still try to make sense of violent demonstrations and a gunfight happening in downtown Portland. We know police made one arrest. That's 65 year old Dennis Anderson. Investigators are looking for the other shooters. Let's get to our Liz Birch joining us live from Northeast Portland, and that's where we can still see damage from those clashes. Liz, city leaders have been largely silent today after the situations that happened in the weekend. But I understand we did just receive a statement from the mayor's office. Elizabeth, that's exactly right. We've only even heard back from one city commissioner about those violent clashes last night. And despite repeated requests for an interview with the mayor, all we've gotten from him is a statement. But here at the scene where those clashes happened, we still see evidence of the destruction. Take a look at this. You can see this overturned van here in this parking lot. This is what the scene in Northeast Portland looked like as the groups lit fireworks and shot paintball guns. Our crews on scene saw damage to businesses and improvised explosives left next to a gas station. A shooting in downtown Portland followed as those dueling demonstrations spread from Northeast. Today, the mayor said in a statement, quote, violence was contained to the groups of people who chose to engage in violence toward each other. The community at large was not harmed and the broader public was protected property damage was minimal, end quote. People who live in Northeast Portland, however, told me they're frustrated with the lack of planning and response from city leadership. You don't get dressed up in uh, fatigues and play soldier um, if you're not expecting to do something. So both those extremes are, are, are letting, we're letting them define us as a community when we shouldn't allow that to happen. Somebody's got to do something, and that's what we elected them for, to make tough choices. Commissioner Mingus Maps told us in a statement, quote, Chief Lavelle was clear when he stated that Portland police would not be refereeing the extremist circus every time it comes to town. The Portland police did intervene and arrest an active shooter yesterday who appeared to be targeting counter-protesters. And again, Commissioner Maps was the only commissioner who sent us a statement. Commissioner Joanne Hardesty's office told us that she has no comment. Jeff and Elizabeth. All right, and Liz, I understand that, of course, you were at that news conference that happened days ago on Friday, and then you followed up with police today. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, on Friday, I asked the chief if he was going to ask the governor to call in the National Guard to help control these clashing groups. He told me at the time, no. He also said something really interesting in that press conference. He said that we could not expect to see police in the middle of the crowds keeping those groups apart. So I asked today, I asked police if they stood by that decision. They told me they do. All right, Liz, thank you for that. And how about the man accused of shooting that gun, Dennis Anderson? He went before a judge just this afternoon. Our Dan Tilkin is looking into this. He is digging deeper into that man's criminal and personal history, Dan. Right. Please tell us that this is Dennis Anderson uh, right there. They say a group of people may have been pursuing him before uh, he opened fire. We did look into his background, and he doesn't have a long criminal history. He is now facing one charge of unlawful use of a weapon. That is a felony. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to a domestic violence attempted assault charge and was sentenced to 14 days in jail in order to get mental health and drug treatment. So according to court records, he has been treated twice for using cocaine. Court records also show he lives in Gresham. He's lived in the Portland area since 1972, and he works as a union journeyman floor installer. Just a little bit of background about we've been able to find out about him. And you tried reaching him by phone. Yes, uh, his phone number, his cell phone number is actually in the court documents, so I called him this morning, tried to reach him. He didn't answer. I left a message, and I have not heard back. All right. All right. Dan, thank you.